भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया Live from Moorestown, New Jersey, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily spiritual podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostuba Das. This is episode 1415. Welcome to the show. 1415, right now? That's pretty good, huh? I didn't have, wasn't, didn't have it written down. We're here live at uh, Bhakti Vinod's house. Just did a really wonderful uh, program last night in Tom's River. Tons of people, people I haven't seen in a long time, people that have been into India with me, new people, um, part pe- a lot of people from our community, and it was just really sweet. New people? Like they just became people? They just became people. They're born from pods. <laughs> They're born from pods. <laughs> they were once animals, and then they became people. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I knew people, and then Carla and Ramit showed up from Jai Yoga in Brooklyn. That was a oh, wow. surprise, blew my mind. Um, yeah, it was really nice. That's nice, Herga. Yeah, and today uh, we have we're live at Creep Records for oh. book signing, and then over to Haryashwas at the Bhakti Garden for a Kirtan, Kirtan and book stories from the book in Philadelphia. In Philly, yeah, looking forward to it. I'm hanging out with Bhakti Vinod all day, all weekend. Nice. The king of hearts. All right. Um, Miss Mara, you got any announcements? Here's Mara. Okay. Uh, tomorrow's Q&A day. Supporting members of our Sage community platform can post their questions under the questions for the host tab in the community chat, and we'll put pull questions from there to read and answer on the show tomorrow. Also tune in on Or people Sunday. could write in, right, if they're not. Yeah, they can still write in, too. What's about the Sages? Yeah, they get to the lower part of the line. <laughs> we may or may not answer those yeah. questions. Maybe just like, next. <laughs> Wisdom of Sages, one way to gmail.com. Wisdom of community platform, next. <laughs> <laughs> also, tune in Sunday at 8 a.m. Raghu's interviewing the filmmaker of Christspiracy. Yeah. It's Who's Christ that? Spiracy, Cowspiracy. Seaspiracy. And Seaspiracy was really good. I saw that one, too. Oh, my God. You would never believe I thought the fishing industry, you know, hey, don't kill fish. Where do you see seaspiracy? You're like, what was I thinking? Eating fish or shellfish, etc. It's really good. Shines light on a lot of crazy stuff that's going out there. But this one's specifically on, um, well, we'll know if, once I watch the movie in full. But it's um, how vegetarianism and restraint of the tongue is built into a Christian thought. And that's why this this film is getting the most pushback um, because it's going right after Christianity as opposed to the meat industry. Going after fishing. Christianity or just trying well, yeah, to... Yeah, well, it challenges people in their deep root To beliefs. be Christian. To be... No, it challenges Christians to take a look at their dietary choices. And saying that if they're going to be true Christians, they need to do you this. you got to follow the Prince of Peace. Okay. Yeah, so it's not attacking Christianity, but it's... No, it's enhancing what people are pa- practice. Okay. You know, they're like, I, I look at them, but, but like, even my daughter is just like, oh my God, there's another movie coming out? Those first two were great. Mm-hmm. This is what's playing in the Capo household, the conspiracy movie. <laughs> Housepiracy. <laughs> and JFK conspiracy. <laughs> Housepiracy. I'm ready for moon spiracy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, uh, how are you, uh, buddy? Buddy I'm boy? Good, buddy. I'm doing all right there. Isn't this the, the story of our life? You're just like planted steady. This says a lot about you. You just plant yourself. You're steady. You show up. And I'm just like hovering around like a free <laughs> radical. <laughs> it's like that. Lot. I'm about to get ready to go. I'm starting to get planned for a trip to India, you know? I just found out, you know, I'm teaching a, a group in Rishikesh, but now I just found out that it's like, it's not even exactly in Rishikesh. It's like 45 minutes, like into the mountains, some Ooh. kind of special resort up there. What's it called? Uh, it's called Oneness. Oneness. Speaking That's of Oneness. Like a cult. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I remember when I was moving to California, that was my mom's warning. Careful for the cults out there. 
Oh, and you fell right into it, though, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was already in one. She mom. could see. She could see that you were vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Krishna! All right, you ready to get into the nugget today? Yes, sir. I don't know how to use this computer, though. It's Henry David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau nugget. All right. All right. This is a good one. I like the it. perception of beauty is a moral test. A moral test. The perception of beauty. It's a moral. Why, explain that, sir. You want me to explain it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think what Thoreau is saying here is how we perceive beauty um, says a lot about our character, right? Okay. And like and that. so, and so you know we can ask ourselves the question: Where do I find beauty? I would say it's not even just where we find beauty, um, but it also has to do with like how we perceive beauty too, and and we can talk okay. about that. But these will you know you can do serious soul searching rather than just like being pulled to where your senses find beauty. Naturally, we're all attracted to beauty. The senses, the, the eyes want to see beautiful forms and the the ears want to hear beautiful sounds. And, and generally we say, okay, just see how simple the formula is. Keep trying to feed the beauty into the senses and, ex and enjoy it. Or you could say exploit it, right? Like right. the word exploit is kind of a strong word, but literally, that's what we're like exploit means to find full use of or derive benefit from right it's and so used as also a pejorative to sort yeah of, well that would be the second definition is like hurt me to use a situation or person in an unfair or selfish way yeah but in one sense we'll find that even the innocent exploitation is really if we look at it from a deeper uh Vedantic perspective, it it's also has the second definition. It's both. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like maybe yesterday we heard that verse from the Gita exploit the resources of this inferior material nature. Yeah. Ex oh, yeah, exactly. We were right there yesterday. Yeah. So, so, you know, two people can perceive beauty in the same object, but perceive it from different platforms. We, 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 um, different perspectives are. In an entirely different way, in a way that says something entirely different about their character. Sure. Um, we were we were hearing yesterday about this otum protum. Yeah. The uh, yeah, it was, you know, I had lunch uh, with um, Pradumna Prabhu, the great pundit, you know, who you've, we've great had on the show. Translator right? of the Bhagavad Gita, or was uh, Sanskrit editor of the, the Srimad Bhagavatam, or was the editor? Sanskrit editor for all of Prabhupada's books, practically. Amazing. Like. Amazing. Yeah. You know what? I think uh, he's going to come visit Super Soul Farm. All right. We're working on that. Nice. Come up. So, so I threw this at him, this otum protum. You know, did, did he you pick it tell apart? me. Huh? Did he pick it apart for you? Well, <laughs> he's just such a character. You know, he's like a classic. He's, he's, there's two things you can see in him. You know, one is that he's a very humble Vaishnava. He's a real super bhakti yogi humble. in that sense. A gentle, even though he's so brilliant. He's a super genius. Like he has to put it in low gear to have a yeah. conversation with Yes, me. he has to he has to dumb like, his we'll self go, down. Dumb to it go down. To... <laughs> and, and 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 with that on that side is also a bit of that kind of like um I don't know, absent minded professor, but just kinda of like you know, those professors, yeah. their minds are they're just yeah, kind yeah, of yeah quirky in their own way. But I will say when he speaks, you're on the edge of your seat. It's not oh, yeah. like he's going over your head. He really can communicate well. So I threw that otum protum, which meant the way that I was trying to get more into the, the actual Sanskrit. What is it? Etym, etym, not, etym, not, etymology. Etymology. But he was, you know, because otum protum, they say it's like the, he says, oh, the wolf and the waff. <laughs> you know, like the, right. we we're hearing yesterday about how it's, there's a thread going lengthwise and there's a thread going breadthwise and together they form a cloth they are the cause of the cloth at the same time they are the cloth they're, they're, they're both the substance of the cloth and the cloth itself and that's the way that a, a wise person sees this world is that actually krishna is the otum and the protum he he's he's 
he's the spiritual energy going one direction. He's right. the material energy going the other direction. It's all woven together into the world that we have. It's, and it's all Krishna's energy. And if I see the world in that way, if I'm aware of that, if I'm not losing my awareness of that in my quote unquote immoral pursuit of beauty in this world, right? then I perceive the, I, I'm, I'm, observing the same object that another person is, you know, two people are looking at Bridget Bardot and one is thinking, beautiful, if Bridget only Bardot. I could exploit that. How right? old are you, man? <laughs> Bridget Bardot, <laughs> classic beauty. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and it's one person is, is, is looking at the form and saying, if only I could exploit that beauty, you know, maybe another person is looking at it. If only, if I, if only I had that beauty, you know, but another, but a person who's got that otum protum, that everything is Krishna's energy, they can be observing the exact same beauty from an entirely different perspective, a, an entirely selfless perspective. Can I be, and you know, uh, let's say an, a less mature Vedantin in their aspiration to not be controlled by the senses might actually harden their heart and deny the beauty of this world. Okay. Whereas someone who's seeing it all as Krishna's energy won't deny, they'll perceive the beauty from a perspective of selflessness. Mm. You know, and, and so I think that's where this bhakti um, conception, paradigm, philosophy, this is kind of what it's opening up is that I can move through this world and actually be moved by the beauty in such a way where my heart becomes softer, where I, I become more selfless. Mm. Uh, and, and, and I'm not even deny, hardening myself and denying the beauty, but I'm actually, wherever that beauty is, and that, and that beauty, you know, what is beauty? Here's a definition for beauty, a, a combination of qualities um, that pleases the aesthetic senses. Or a, combina or a combination of qualities that pleases the intellect or moral sense, you know, and it can all please our moral sense if we're seeing it in the right perspective, the, the perspective that's not clouded or warped by lust or warped by selfish motive. Mm -hmm. Like this, you know, of course, within the gunas, there's different shades of beauty. And if we're steeped in the mode of ignorance, something really disgusting Dark. is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes right. beautiful for the for the guna that you're in. in you see way. that in a lot of art, you know. Sure. Look at this. This is worth a fortune, this new piece of art. It's just like a it's mess. Some tamasic thing. Yeah. <laughs> tamasic energy. <laughs> so we see that we see that in music. You know, I mean if you put something like, you know, Bach next to Megadeth, something like that, or yeah. It, it's like it's not like they both don't have, you don't get some pleasure out of it. But it's, Bach, it's pleasing the senses in some way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you could e extract Bach and look at the score of music and how the oboe works with the flute and the second flute oh. and, the, uh, and the clarinet and the second clarinet and the lead violin and the second the violin. The fugue. The fugue. Are you, are, do you know what fugue is, Raghunath? I'm not sure what fugue is. What is fugue? Fugue is like where you have a melody. And then you you play that melody, oh, and right. then you play yeah. the same melody on top of it from but from a different time, so they're kind of blending together. And then you do it even a third time or a fourth time, and it turns into this mathematical kind of. <laughs> and then you start it again. <laughs> you would make a good conductor. I think you take join. Don't get me going. <laughs> right. Remember? Remember? No. no, I don't remember. Everybody else does. They're all looking like, shh, don't say it. He's drum major, to... remember that story? Oh, yeah, it hurt, huh? All right, yeah, it But it's hurts. a drum major's not a conductor. Yes, he is. Drum major conducts. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't learned how to conduct with a baton. Oh, when they took that baton out of your hands, you must have been heartbroken. <laughs> it's not even a baton. It's a mace. It's like a big... 
Oh, that thing. Oh, you're yeah. keeping time with that thing? Keep time. That's what they do with it. I had no idea. And they spin it, but you got to even when you spin it, you got to spin it on beat and you got to catch it. You got to throw it up and you got to catch it on beat. So everybody's looking at that mace kind of like Everybody's looking at the drum I major. Get it. Oh, Roganoth. Holding the whole thing or she is holding the whole thing together. Roganoth, I feel your pain. You don't. You'll never quite. I... Feel it. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You might have your own pain in different flavors, but you'll never feel that pain. Okay. Now later t today, uh, some people are listening. Like, what's he talking about? <laughs> they go Let's back to the drum major it. episode. We don't know what number that was, but <laughs> Roganoth got that got that mace taken from his hand. It was oh, my Rogan. greatest pain in life. <laughs> it's, it's true. It was. Rogan. Okay. But oh, okay. So there's different flavors. There's different flavors of. Uh, of music, there's different flavor of, of joy for the senses. Yeah, there's different flavors of beauty for the ears and for the eyes, right? And as we refine ourselves into sattva, our our tastes change, our desires in food change, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's something rajasic about certain foods, and there's something tamasic about certain foods, and there's something sattvic about other foods. And generally, it's a very healthy place mentally, physically. Uh, emotionally, when we're steeped in sattva. But then there's the vision of true beauty, which is uh, not of this world any longer. So I was thinking the uh -huh. Vedantists train hard. And sometimes you'll hear those elements of Vedanta in the devotees speak. You know, I remember, um, you know, I, I was 22 as a monk. So when you're 22, it's like all your hormones are on full all night duty, like 24-7. <laughs> You're tr you, all you want is women, women, women for a man. While you, when you're 22, that's like the, the you're out of control biologically, you know. And you have to like look at everything philosophically. Like I've already had lots of girlfriends, and I realized that's not what I want. And then well, well maybe this girl, oh maybe this girl, and this girl, this girl. And then I had to go through this whole process of realizing it's not a girl that I want. It's something deeper in my heart that I want. Oh, yeah. Now, that makes sense where you're, you're in a sober state of mind until the next beautiful girl walks by and thinks you're cute. And then it's sort of like, what? And like all your intelligence goes right out the window. Hmm. So I had to keep these, these Vedantic thoughts in my mind. And some of them are like, what are you looking at? Analyze what you're looking at. What is you're looking at a person's legs or their arms or their butt or their breasts or their face or their eyes. What's an eyeball anyway? And that's what this Vedanta philosophy, where you, you, it's just, what is an eyeball? It's just like a, an extension of the brain. It's a gluey little, um, uh, slimy little thing. This is what you're attracted to. This is what you're going to give up your spiritual path for, an eyeball, an eyelid, a butt. Come on, a breast. Come on. And so I'd have to talk myself, and it just started becoming well, almost misogynistic. That's kind of the denying the beauty of the world. It's the, it's the denying the beauty it's of the It's an world. effective aspect of Vedanta. I mean, it is employed, but it's not the full evolution. Right? Sure. And so then I had to change my aspect of how I looked at the opposite sex when I was drawn to the opposite sex. And I was a brahmachari. I was trying to be celibate. And that was, like a, that was a tall order at age 22 and 23 hmm. and 24. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to go, beautiful, but, but won't satisfy my soul. Oh, that that so beautiful. That's, that that's but your aphorism. Beautiful, but won't satisfy. Won't give me what I need. Mine is a little different. And that, that that way, I just sort of like accepted it and moved on. How about this one? Beautiful, but not mine to enjoy. That too. That works too. All right. Yes. Why didn't you tell me that back then? It could have helped me. <laughs> <laughs> While I was yes. going, gluey eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or not mine to exploit. Let's say it that way, right? Not mine to exploit. Not not, it, 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 I may appreciate, it's but... it's not supposed to make you... All this stuff is not supposed to make you a misogynist. That's if you're doing it wrong. It's supposed to make you right. see a spirit soul with another, another body instead of just seeing them for their form. I don't. It, it, when you read my book, there's this. <laughs> okay. There's this. Um, <laughs> ouch. But, but there's this. Um, when I first became a monk, I, I I went to a senior monk and I said, "Well, why can't we just talk to girls if we're not the body? Why why can't we just hang out and talk to girls?" And he gave this really I thought was a really insightful answer. He said, "Because there's at no time 
that you, because we, he said, we're not the body, we're spirit souls, and they're spirit souls. But at no time are you more convinced you're a man is when you're talking to a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. At that point, it ingrains in you that you are man. So what I'm trying to explain, because Stu was trying to explain, is that you need mantras that are not going to depersonalize the person or make you harden your heart or, or hurt your heart or shut down your heart. Heart hearted, yeah. Heart hearted, yeah. We want actually to be soft hearted. And that's a big part. That's a difference between bhakti and jnana. We're going to use the intelligence, but we're not. We're, but we're going to see even the reflections of the bodies as, what? as something real but temporary. And, 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 as, and then beyond that, as Krishna's energy, right? When, whatever we're seeing, we sh- it, sure. it brings our awareness to Krishna. Sure. And there's a beautiful soul underneath it. And, you know, some, someone was sending this meme out, this little video, not a meme, what do you call it? A little video clip. It was so beautiful, actually. It, 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 in my temporary body, my temporary mind, my temporary intelligence, it was sad. But it shows, like, all these beautiful actresses from the 30s or 40s and what they are now. And back and forth, just back and forth. Mm-hmm. And it, you, you just see people in the long picture. We're looking at our beauty with a temporary eye instead of an eternal eye. And we are meant to develop an eternal eye, not just what looks good now and when you really train yourself you can actually learn to love Mm. right 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 love is a tall order write that down (laughs) (laughs) down. oh krishna okay baba let's we're gonna hear about narda if if we get moving here narda is it wraps up his teachings to to um to Yudhishthir saying, hey, even though you're a king, even though you're a family man, even though you got all kinds of worldly responsibilities, you can become just as spiritually elevated as the renunciate. Yeah. And he's actually going to say, you guys are the perfect example, you and your brothers, the Pandavas, the part of Brahman lives in your house like your, like your buddy, you right. know? Uh, and then he's going to, and then he's going to give his own two lives back. He's going to talk about who he was. And he was this beautiful Gandharva. He was like this incredibly gorgeous heavenly singer uh, surrounded by beautiful heavenly women. And he got lost in the exploitive attitude and he had to come down. It happens. He had to come down. (laughs) It happens. (laughs) Oh, this life, huh? All right. And then the beautiful thing is about the Narda stories, it starts to tell the back, it tells the back story, yeah. tells where he's at now. You got the right Sangha. It, it's and, great. It's, it, it, yeah. These parts of the Bhagavatam make us see ourselves as eternal beings hmm. with different costumes that we're wearing for different acts of the play. Masks? Different masks, different <laughs> costumes for different right. scenes of the play. The okay. drama <laughs> that's unfolding, Mr. Castillo. The drama that is our life. Our, our lives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do this. Narayanam namaskritya naram shayvanarotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatuja yamadirayat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayeshu vadreshu nicham bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti or bhavati naishtiki by regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome, the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om again at Tamarandasya again on Jana Salakaya Chaksurun Militam Nina Tasmay Shri Gadaveda Maha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading for the Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, I've got to open up the Bhagavatam. Because, where are we? I think we're on seven, six, chapter 15, six, I think. 60. We read yesterday uh, 63. So we're on 64. Oh, we're going to wrap up this whole book. Bo- we may wrap up the canto today. What? <laughs> That's right. We've been on it since the beginning of the year, since going back to January. 
So um, we were wrapping it up with Narda. He, he began to say that if you can see, you know, our philosophy is not oneness, is not difference, it's oneness and difference, right? Achintya, not oneness, not difference. It's oneness, oneness and, and difference. difference. Yeah, there, there's Makes a way the most to, sense. It, it's, it's the balanced perspective. Yeah. And so right now, Narda is saying that if you see a certain oneness in this world, then you could move through the world of duality and keep your consciousness on the spiritual level. And he said in three ways, right? He said there's oneness, bhava dweta, oneness in yeah. conceptions. That's what we spoke about yesterday, that every th the conception is that this is all Krishna's energy. So that's a oneness, right? There's nothing that I can find, even myself, that's not Krishna's energy. If I yeah. see in that way, my consciousness goes above the three states of wakefulness, dream, and deep sleep. I, I, it takes my consciousness to the spiritual level. Now, today, we're going to hear about two more types of seeing oneness. Oneness in actions and oneness in objectives. Hit it. Okay. Text 64, so this, this is oneness in actions. My dear Yudhisthira, when all the activities one performs with his mind, words, and body are dedicated directly to the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one reaches oneness of activities called Kriyadvaita. Okay. That's a beautiful statement, huh? There you go. <laughs> Kriyadvaita. <laughs> beautiful statement. Maybe you should be Swami Kriyadvaita someday. Thank right? you, Baba. <laughs> When all activities one performs with his mind, words and bodies are dedicated directly to the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one reaches oneness of activities called Kriya Dvaita. And this is a common construct used in, in, in Vedanta. Mind, words, body. That's one after the, I'm going to get them all lined up. Right. We My could mind, use our body, but our mind could be somewhere else. Yeah. Or, it's like... Uh, you know, if you tell me to unload the dishwasher, I was like, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it. Right? Well, now that your words are not, your body was into it, but your words no and your mind no. Sure. Or you right. might say, okay, I'll do it. And now your words were, <laughs> were there. I'm happy to do it. But still your mind wasn't there. Sure. And, and so the, the body is, the, in one sense, the most easy to manipulate or to get in line. Right. And the words, second, and then ultimately the mind is the most challenging and that's the completion of the yoga when the mind is there. And that's, that's what our finishing, you just like if you're a builder and you do your, the finishing, what's it called? The finishing work. I'm not a builder, but you know, <laughs> okay, part time. You, you lay down, you frame out the house and you build the walls and then you do the finishing work, the details. It's the details is working on our mind or our, um, in one sense, it's the details, but in another sense, it's also kind of like the real essence of it all, too. You know, it's not just super surface level, but it's, you know, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, so now now we've got, I need to see everything is Krishna's energy, that oneness. I need to offer all of what I've got, my body, my, my words, and my mind. That's a oneness. Okay, and then the third oneness. Text 65. When the ultimate goal and interest of oneself, one's wife, one's children, one's relatives, and all other embodied living beings is one, this is called Dravya Dvaita. That could be your name. Dravya Dvaita Swami. <laughs> Swami it's a hard Swami one to say. Dra <laughs> Swami Dravya Dvaita. Oh, I love Swami Dravya Dvaita. Dvaita. That is a tongue Dravya. twister. Dravya Dvaita. It's hard not to say Dravya Dvaita. It's hard not to say drugs. Drugs and <laughs> <laughs> Dravya Dvaita, or oneness or interest. When the ultimate goal, I'm going to read that again, an interest of oneself, one's family, one's children, one's relatives, and all other embodied living beings is one. This is called Dravya Dvaita. Yeah, all of oneness our... Oneness of interest. All of our efforts mm -hmm. and all of the results of those efforts and the efforts of all those around us, um, we can see them all as being directed um, to, beyond the the material elements and into spirit or into God, that we all share that because we are all spirit, then together we all have one interest, right? And that is to elevate all of ourselves onto that spiritual platform to to that we all begin to um, experience life from that spiritual perspective. So now we have a oneness again, a, a oneness in. Um, 
conceptions, everything is God's energy, a oneness in actions, my body, my words, my mind, all dedicated in that oneness, and a oneness in objectives, that we all share the same spiritual interest. Let's, let's operate from that level individually, and let's operate amongst each other with that common interest. Now we have a oneness from which we can transcend the duality of this world, even while living in the midst of it. Okay. Okay, text 65. When the ultimate goal and no, interest... Text 66. Born... Yes, sorry. In normal conditions, in the absence of danger, O you to steer, a man should perform his prescribed activities according to his status in life with the things, in endeavors, process, and living place that are not forbidden for him and not by any other means. Okay, so... This is kind of, it's a simple way of saying, Yudhishthira, you live, you're of this world, and, and when, we, when we're of this world, there's all kind of regulations and prescriptions that are there, particularly Vedantic prescriptions, or, or from, you know, coming from the Vedas. Um, you know, you're a king, so you're supposed to live in a certain place, and you're supposed to behave in a certain way and respond to things according to that role that you're playing. And one should play those roles in normal conditions in the absence of danger. In other words, he's giving some latitude for emergency, right? Yeah. There may be some emergency situations where we have to, um, where we have to live or act in such a way that is um, different than that of our prescribed duties. But in general, we should act that way, but with this consciousness just described mm. earlier. Like it. And, and now, now he's going to say, keep the main thing, the main thing. Now, but always do it all for the purpose of, of uh, living in your, your true nature as a servant of God, servant of Krishna. I would love to meet King Yudhisthira. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I'd probably be really embarrassing I, when she did. I'd, I'd, meet, I'd you know, be like... Myself, but... I'd be like, uh, keep the main thing, the main thing. He's like, I like that. I'm going to use that. I say it slightly differently than you do, but. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this okay. miscreant? <laughs> Remove him. <laughs> Chops off one of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was kinder. I don't think he just chop a hand off. Okay. Oh, King. One should perform his occupational duties according to these instructions, as well as other instructions given in the Vedic literature. Just to remain a devotee of the of Lord Krishna. That's the purpose. Thus, even while at home, one will be able to reach the destination. Okay, he's That's saying so you, cool. What a great you verse! You don't have to become a, a sannyasi and wander off to the mountains. Let me read that again, just because it's nice. Oh, King, once you perform his occupational duties according to these instructions, as well as other instructions given in Vedic literature, just to remain a devotee of Lord Krishna. Boom. Thus, and now he's even while say, at home, one will be able to reach the destination. And so now he's going to say, "Look at yourself. You, you're you're the you're the ultimate um, Vedantin." He's going to say, "You know, you think, oh, the Vedantin is the like waiting Vedantin show. who walks away and and the ultimate leaves. Vedantin." Well, but I'm saying he's saying, "You don't think that that the real Vedantin is necessarily the one that walks away from the world." He's going to say, "The part, you know, Brahman." Is the goal of the of the Advaita Vedanta, right, and of the sannyasi in, a, in that sense that I leave behind the world to find the Brahman, the the oneness. He's going to say the part of Brahman, mm. the source of 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 all the spiritual energy, is is the form of Krishna, and that Krishna lives in your house like he's your best friend. Mm. Okay, sixty-eight, sixty-eight. Oh, King Yudhisthira. Because of your service to the Supreme Lord, all of you, the Pandavas, that's all his brothers, defeated the greatest dangers posed by numerous kings and demigods. Yeah. By serving the lotus feet of Krishna, you conquered great enemies who were like elephants, and thus you collected ingredients for sacrifice. By his grace, may you be delivered from material involvement. Okay. So this is happening at the time where Arjuna, Yudhisthira, his brothers are going through hell on earth. Even though they're like the emperors of the earth, it's as if the whole world is turning against them in battle, trying to usurp their kingdom, trying to kill their family members. And um, 
Yudhisthira is focused on the main thing. Yeah. And Krishna just was there to take them through it all. Sure. Text 69. Now we get the backstory of, of Narda. Very interesting. Long, long, long ago, in another Mahakalpa, that's another millennium of Brahma, of Brahma. Yeah. I existed as a Gandharva. Gandharva is like an angel, beautiful singing angel, known as Upabarhana. But angel, let's say that they exist on these in these beautiful realms in higher levels of the universe, right? Yeah. Uh, I was very respected by other Gandharvas. He's a high-level so, Gandharva. Um, a high-level angel. Yeah, but I think not, when you say angel, it's just going to... I don't know. I'm picturing... People are think when, wings when, and, and yeah, just like... Yeah, they had wings. Does a Gandharva have wings? I think they do. <laughs> you think they do because you they always fly. think of the angel. <laughs> <laughs> they fly around. They sing songs. They're from heavenly places. They don't need wings I think of fly. an angel. They play musical instruments, I think. Yeah, but they're also, you know, the, and what's going to be revealed here is they're, they're not, when we think angel, we think of that soul that does nothing but necessarily glorify God. They're, well, there's they're dark angels, man. <laughs> dark <Right>? angels. <laughs> so in any case, he's this subtle being on another level of the universe, uh, enjoying life on a very high level with great beauty and talents. Sure. So he's like, you know, an alpha angel. Okay. <laughs> I had a beautiful face. Some people have very beautiful faces, huh? Uh, the beauty of the face, we probably can't even begin to imagine of this. Well, yeah, right. Sometimes we see beautiful people of this world. It's like nothing compared to what, what's out there in the other realms. Yeah. I had a beautiful face. I had a beautiful face and a pleasing, attractive bodily structure. Decorated with flower garlands and sandalwood pulp, I was most pleasing to the women of my city. So he was a male, I'm assuming a male, Gandharva. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the other women angels thought he was sexy, hot. Very beautiful. Attractive. A hunk. They saw beauty. He was a hunk amongst angels. Okay, you don't have... We have information. This, it's, that's what's it's cool about the Vedic literature. You want to know about angels? You hear about angels? Here's what angels do. Here's the life of an angel. Yeah. Goes uh, thus. I was bewildered. This is like my story. Always feeling lusty desires. Yeah, you were that incredibly handsome, beautifully bodily I mean, structured I... person surrounded by beautiful <laughs> women. This is that's all. It's totally your story, Ragnar. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in a heavenly, where heavenly, beautiful. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Yeah, so we're here in uh, Narda's. Narda's background. He, he he had that beauty. He didn't see his own beauty as Krishna's energy. No, you start thinking, yes, I am very beautiful. I am beautiful. Yes, yeah. finally, people understand. Sometimes I think in, in in my life, I've gone through pe periods where I'm more attractive and less attractive. And sometimes you think you're riding like, high now that you got a little bit of that hair back. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying it. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Was, did I? <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. Yeah. Someone just told me the other day, it's like, um, he's like, yeah, it's like he just got engaged to be married. And he said, yeah, now that I'm engaged, like so many people, so many girls are coming up to me. It's like sometimes I think we go through karmic, karmic things where we're very attractive to people. And then we go through a karmic shift where people in opposite sex, same sex, whatever, are not attracted to us any longer. So, um, why am I saying this? I have no I idea. I was on a roll. <laughs> okay. Were anyway. You? Okay. Yeah. If you then well, you can get if you're in one of those phases where you think, yeah, um, I am. A, people are all of a sudden attracted to me. We start to think, oh, people are finally realizing my how greatness, beautiful I am, how yeah. smart I am, how clever I am, how charismatic I am. It, it's just and it, it's just like we our ego, our false ego has been waiting for this moment where we can say, I'm going to claim it. And then, of course, there's devastation because it's not real you. It's your false ego. It's the temporary you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever <clears throat> of Krishna's opulence is that we seem to possess. It's a very healthy meditation to to, to and that's why. 
the that little film clip you were talking about is kind of um in one sense it's it's a very sobering truth that mm-hmm. it's it's helpful for us to always remember that whatever opulence of Krishna we may possess, whether it be beauty, strength, power, fame, that it's only something that we're granted um, when it's on the material level, it's something that we're granted momentarily. And then it and then it disappears. And when we understand that we are we are um, become immune to the pain of this world, right? It, 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 it's 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 our attachment to it, mm. and the, and the misconception that it is our beauty and it is our identity that causes the suffering when it in a, when it eventually um, is removed from us. Sure. And sure. so Narda, in this stage of his previous life, he had that beauty and it was intoxicating. He had that beauty and it was just like, look at me, you know, look how beautiful I am. Everybody loves me. I am I'm, the best. I'm, I'm so attractive and, and all these beautiful, I can exploit their beauty. I can use my beauty as a tool they want to- want me to. <laughs> I'll do them a favor. So so it's it's- it's something that the it's materialistic impossible. programming in us aspires for, but it's the recipe for for confusion, anxiety, Disaster, pain. pain. Yeah. I, I've said this example on the show before, but I'll say it again. The most confusing thing I've ever experienced in my life is when you're on stage, you're singing, and you get like thousands of people in some random city in the world that are singing the exact same lyrics that you wrote and they're singing and it's like such a weird high it's such a mind funk because you're like oh my god this is the highest high i've ever had and then when you get off the stage and you sort of like backstage or on the street and no one recognizes you yeah, no one's singing along with your song you're just a nobody it is such a hard come down and you have to feed it with some type of illusion. You have to feed mm-hmm. it with the, and this is why famous people can often easily slip into drug addiction, sex addiction, um, just surrounding themselves with sycophantic people, etc. because there's such a dichotomy between the two worlds on stage and off stage. Yeah. Um, and of course, that crash is a mental crash as well. You got to medicate the pain of that somehow. Anyway, I I feel with you, Gandharva man. Oh, no, Ragnar, it's been this right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Actually, right, we all have. <laughs> hey, by the way, the only and the only way to heal that is to say, "I'm the servant of Lord Krishna. I'm here to serve God, not to be God." Once you feel wow. like I am God, these people are looking at me as God and I am God, there you go. that's when you're yeah. going to suffer. That's you're, that oneness. Yeah. I'm going to use everything I have, right? We said that earlier. My body, my, my words, my occupation, my home, my family. I'm going to use that for the absolute. Then you become free from that duality. You know, it's, it's very important that you said that, Raghunath, because what, the dichotomy, the, the dichotomy of selfishness when it's placed into an atmosphere, selflessness becomes heightened, right? And so what happens now is that, is that Narda, in his intoxicated, selfish state, intoxicated by his own beauty and the beauty of others, he's going to step into a particularly sacred space, but he's going to be incapable of honoring it as a sacred space mm-hmm. because he's so bewildered by his own beauty and opulences. And it becomes a cause wisdom. of his downfall. I'm intoxicated because, by your wisdom. Oh, I'm intoxicated by your beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. Text 71. This is what's going on on those higher planets. At least right, some this of the is good. This is good. Once there was a Sankirtan festival to glorify the Supreme Lord in an assembly of the demigods. That must have been fun. Yeah, and the Gandharvas and the Apsaras—they're also a type of heavenly, thing, heavenly ladies. I think Apsaras—they're feminine. I think dancers, or they dance as well, which yeah. is were invited by the Prajapatis. Those are the people who give birth to all the species. To they're, but they're yeah, they're kind of like the seniors, the the, the, the big time important leaders in, in those. Yeah, and they invited you to a big 
otherworldly ball in the sky. For a very sacred purpose, right? It says Hari Gata Upagayane. It to glorify God. And on occasion, uh, an occasion of Kirtan for glorifying Hari, for glorifying Krishna or Lord Vishnu. Mm. So that was the per. It had this sacred. You know, these. You can imagine these. Um, uh, these uh, prajapatis. They're like. I mean, when I think of them, I think of very sober um, characters, you know, the, yeah. the, the, very righteous, stoic. very noble. Yeah, maybe stoic, very noble characters. Yeah. And they're like, oh, let us invite the most talented musicians and dancers for an occasion to bring all our minds to this higher level of glorifying Lord Narayana, Lord, Lord Vishnu. We'll, we'll, let's create the scene, right? And you put in the effort and you invite all the right people. And then Narada, because he's bewildered by his own, by Krishna's opulence, which he's temporarily possessing, he's intoxicated by it and he can't appreciate the sacredness of the event. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a beautiful face. Wait a second, where am I? No, what no, number no. are we on? 72. 72. Narada Muni continued, being invited to that festival, I also joined and, surrounded by women, I began musically singing the glories of the demigods. So he didn't sing the glories of Narayan. He, he began the to the sing the glories of the, of the devas. Because of this, the Prajapadis, the great demigods in charge of the affairs of the universe, forcefully cursed me with these words. Because you have committed an offense. May you immediately become a sudra devoid of beauty. And, and, and you know, Raghun, you read that like it was like a heavy condemnation. And it may have been. It may have been exactly like you read it. Or it may have been like Without emotion say, say, to say, it. or even with compassion. Because you have committed this offense, may you immediately become, devo become a sudra devoid of beauty. Then, then, you'll, then you'll begin to understand truth again. Then you'll be able to see this world... Not not clouded by this opulence that of beauty that apparently you can't handle, right? You could not handle it. Can we handle the opulences that we're given in this world? Even the tiny, tiny opulences that we're given, right? Can we handle them, or do they confuse us, cloud our? If they cloud us, then it's a blessing that it be taken away. So now he's going to take birth um, without this beauty, back on earth. Text 73. So anyway, he's now he's got this other birth. It's coming down. So although I took a birth as a sudra from the womb of a maid servant, I engaged in the suras of Vaishnavas who were well-versed in Vedic knowledge. There you go. It's a, it's a low birth, right? You're born into a poor family. She's a yeah. maid. You're born as a little She has it runs like a little inn, you know? Runs a little This inn story was told earlier in the first canto of Bhagavatam. Yeah. And now... But who who stop and stayed at the inn? A bunch of great souls. A bunch of sadhus, Vaishnavas, bhakti yogis. So now he's serving the Vaishnavas who are well versed in Vedic knowledge. Consequently, in this life, I got the opportunity to take birth as the son of Lord Brahma. So, so what's here the was, true little blessing? Boy, yeah. Right, little boy, not so from a, not from a good family, but he had the good fortune. This no pretty, ego, no ego now. Right, because he's got he's not in this beautiful Gandharva body, able to sing beautifully and all of this. No, he's just a simple boy. <clears throat> and from that platform, the association. That's a simple boy. <laughs> born and <laughs> born and raised on the earthly realm. Um, and so, so from that platform, from the platform of humility, the sangha, the association of these of these bhakti yogis, it just he just absorbed it. What a blessing now, right? Consequently, yeah. he took he he took birth as Narada, the son of Lord Brahma. The process of chanting the holy name of the Lord is so powerful. Hear this. Yeah. That by this chanting, even householders can very easily gain the ultimate results achieved by persons in the renounced order. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to give up the world as, you know, romanticized in some of the Vedic teachings, or even mm -hmm. in Christian teachings, you leave everything yeah. behind. You, you know, even a householder. Maharaj okay. Yudhisthira, I have now explained to you that process. My Dharma. dear Maharaj Yudhisthira. My dear Maharaj Yudhisthira. 
Oh, my dear Maharaj, oh. you just here. <laughs> oh no, you were you were right. You, you hadn't finished that, that previous. You were verse correcting yet. me, and it's okay to correct me. You just got to be right. I am ninety nine percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> my dear Maharaj, you just here. You Pandavas are so very fortunate in this world that many many great saints who can purify all the planets of the universe come to your house. Look at that. Like ordinary visitors. Huh? That's right. Furthermore, I mean, look at you. You're just with Keshava Swami at your house. Then you had uh, Prajumna with you yesterday. He wasn't like in my house. You're like the Pandavas. You're like the Pandavas. Not quite. <laughs> you're like Saha, Dave. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Furthermore, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is living confidentially with you in your house, just like your brother. Yeah. It's quite amazing, isn't it? This is where he says, Param Brahma Manusha Lingam, that the Parabrahman, the source of all the spiritual energy, he's he, in his Manusha Lingam, he's appearing as an ordinary human being to be your friend, right? He's, he's walking right into your house, that Parabrahman. No one's more connected to Brahman than you. Oh, my God. What good fortune. Yeah. And we and then we have to take this good we see this good fortune with you to see look at in our own life. We're here in the Bhagavatam every day. We have association with great souls. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like Dude. if temples we go to pilgrimage on a regular basis. This is our life. That's nice. This is bad. this is great. <laughs> this is awesome. It's incredible. <laughs> life is good. <laughs> beyond good it's like otherworldly <laughs> and we're householders yeah how wonderful it is that the supreme personality of god had the para brahman krishna who is sought by great sages for the sake of liberation and transcendental bliss is acting as your best well-wisher your friend your cousin your heart and soul your worshipable director and your spiritual master it's unbelievable Crazy. Just thinking about right. it is crazy. And he's a householder, right? He's yeah. He's a householder. He's got a house. Present here now is the, supre is the same Supreme Personality of Godhead whose true form cannot be understood even by such great personalities as Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. He is realized by devotees because of their unflinching surrender. May that same Personality of Godhead, who is the maintainer of his devotees, and who is worshipped, by silence, by devotional service, and by cessation of material activities, be pleased with us. How do you think he's worshipping? Shh. Shh. Don't talk. Shh. 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 <laughs> you can be quiet. <laughs> just, let's just be here. <laughs> let's be here now. <laughs> it's like sometimes you go to these kirtans where after the kirtan it just stops, it's just silence. <laughs> And like, who's going to say And you're like, I'm like, Brindavan <laughs> Bihari <laughs> But it's somehow he's worshipped by silence. It would be interesting. I didn't find any commentaries on that. To me, it just seems no material sound. No material Thank sound. Brindavan Bihari Lal, Sri Krishna Bhagavan. Ki. That is a silence in a that sense. That is silence. Yeah. It's not material sound. It's glorification of God. Yeah, but by the absence of the mundane. Right. There you go. Okay. Look at Mara. She's getting involved. Okay, she's, oh, she's just she's getting sitting, the takeaways she's, she's ready. I thought, she, the I thought she was about to bump us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got three more verses to end the canto. The whole canto. Yeah, the canto. It's exciting. It's eight oh one though. <laughs> huh? We're gonna have to do this tomorrow. Well, let's finish it up. Let's finish it up. Yeah, it's eight oh one, sir. It's, we don't have to stop right now. Let's keep going. It's three verses. We're pretty much done. People don't like when we break formula. <laughs> oh come on, man! Just Shri be Sukhanev, free. Because you're gonna talk too. So you just gotta shh. Worship this with silence. <laughs> you, shh, I'm talking. <laughs> Shri Sukhita Goswami said, Maharaj Yudhisthira, the best member of the Bharat dynasty, thus learned everything from the descriptions of Narada. Mm -hmm. After hearing these instructions, he felt great pleasure from within his heart and in great ecstasy, love, and affection. He worshiped Lord Krishna. He's feeling the deepest kind of spiritual ecstasies. <laughs> Narada, by the way, this was sage level two. <laughs> Narada Muni, being worshipped by Krishna and Maharaj Yudhisthira, bade them farewell and went away. Just floated oh. away. Yudhisthira, uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj, having heard that Krishna, his cousin, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, 
was struck with wonder. He's feeling that's a special wonder. He's his body is just like experiencing ecstasy that we can't imagine. On all the planets within this universe, the varieties of living entities moving and not moving, including the demigods, demons and human beings, were all generated from the daughters of Maharaj Daksha. I have now described them in their different dynasties. Oh man, that's going way back to like third canto. We, mm, we just kind of completed this whole family tree kind of thing going on. Yeah, we're jumping over story to story to story, back and forth, millennia after millennium. Miss Mare, what do we take away from all this? What valuable information do you have for us in your notes? I got good stuff to do. Yeah, okay. yeah. Beautiful, but my, not mine to enjoy? No. <laughs> that wasn't Rogu's one. No. <laughs> we had a different one. Beautiful, but won't satisfy me? There you go. You didn't like mine, huh? You put his. No, she, she just read it. She just read it. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy to have a big guy. <laughs> Bhakti is using your intelligence to soften the heart. Oh. Oh, yes. Like butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, a little thumper. Vegan. Tender butter. little thumper. Made of butter. <laughs> butter thumper. <laughs> you little butter thumper, you. <laughs> <laughs> We're meant to develop an eternal eye. Yep, not a temporary eye. Eternal eye. Love is a tall order. Ooh, that is a t-shirt. <laughs> see oneness to move through the world of duality. Couldn't you see uh, Ave Maria and Tom Essig walking around with love is a tall order t-shirts? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I suppose. I try hard enough. Tim O'Reilly, love is a tall order. Our false ego has been waiting for people to appreciate our good qualities. That's my T-shirt. Well, you see, the <laughs> the T-shirt that I put out that you've been rejecting that we're going to put out real soon is more or less saying that, what does love require of me today? Yeah, I like the statement. I didn't like the artwork. No, the oh, artwork is great. T-shirts. It's okay. It'll be a big seller. I'm allowed to have my own taste. I'm I was wondering if it was truly your own taste or if you were influenced by someone else. I'm just going to leave it right there. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it right there. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's so true. That's why you're laughing. I'm you're my laughing. own being, Prabhu. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So live that way. Be free. <laughs> okay. And nobody's asking you to wear the t-shirt. <laughs> no one's asking you to wear the t-shirt. I won't wear it. I won't wear it. Whatever <laughs> opulence we have is here momentarily. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a moment. <sighs> Can we handle the tiny opulences we are given in this world? No, Can I we? can't. <laughs> you and... can't. And? They're so tiny, aren't they? Oh, sorry. Um... Uh, yes, Mer? Member. Mer fumbles right at the goal line here. <laughs> What's going on, Mer? <laughs> well, it's not my computer, so I'm a little like out. Oh, gotcha. You know. Uh, and Narada Muni's backstory is Ragu's backstory. <laughs> it's exactly the same beautiful incredible singer surrounded by beautiful women intoxicated with beauty intoxicated. it's like when george was on when george was went to the antique store and he's trying to pick up that girl and he says when we see things of beauty we must have them <laughs> you remember that one <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear the music, Mayor. I know. We got issues. We got issues. Can you just... Things are breaking down. You go on the road and things are breaking down. Gotta press that play button. Play. There gotta we hit go. Play. Okay, that's it. I <laughs> gotta hit play. Right. The old play button. Thank you everybody for joining us. Woo! Exciting Philadelphia, New Jersey weekend. And um, looking forward to seeing uh, the, the, the retreat up at Super Soul is filling up. Are going away retreat. Hold oh, the music is going incredibly fast right now. Yeah, I don't know what controls we pressed. I didn't even know those press. I pressed. There we go. Time. There we go. Are right, you are saying something, Rogu? I bet in the future we're going to be doubled. Everything's going to be doubled. Double are talking, double our stuff. The cars will go double as fast. Uh, anyway, yeah, Super Soul Retreat, Wisdom of the Sages. Show up, me, Mara, Kasuba, gonna be there. A lot of our people. 
road <laughs> road rage. You, oh, that's wrong with it. <laughs> it's a previous, is that that's, me? Is it Gandarva? I do think you have to work on the face a little bit. Wait a second. What do you mean by that? I don't think it's quite on. Oh, that's actually a photo of me. Gandarva level. <laughs> oh, oh, you're saying I'm not. Well, that's he can't work on it. He's going to have to put some filters on him. But some Gandarvas are old and a little wiser. A little haggard. <laughs> haggard? Do I look that bad in real life? <laughs> Even my feathers look old. <laughs> Your feathers. <laughs> Even my feathers. Like, that's an old bird. But I think you're thinking of the canars. The canars have wings, Rogan. They're the angels bird people. have wings. Get but, that but, into your head. And, 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 and Gandarvas are not angels. Wings. That's the thing. <laughs> they are. I don't know if they are. Okay, someone Wikipedia. 